everybody, I got a couple of boxes in the mail today. Thought I'd open them together with you. Uh, just a little backstory on these. A few months ago, I decided that I was going to go ahead and get my Cisco CCNA certification. And I'm a little bit in a different place than a lot of people who go to get their CCNA in that I already work in the IT field but don't have Cisco certification where a lot of other folks are getting done with college or entering the IT field and they get their CCNA as a step toward uh, getting, their cert getting a first position. Uh, I'm kind of leveraging that at this point by using my employer's training budget to work toward my CCNA. So, these two boxes arrived today from a company called CertificationKits.com and I know a lot of people when they go for the CCNA like to find their Cisco equipment either on eBay or through other means like that Craigslist. Uh, that's really not an option for me based on geographically where I live. There's a whole lot of uh, tech equipment being sold in the used market and really in my point in my life, in my position, getting the certification is important enough to me to uh, make sure that an investment is made to get a working lab up as quickly as possible. So I called certification kits and got a very helpful salesman on the phone. We talked through a few options and we actually customized one of the kits that they offer on their site and we'll talk about that in a minute. But these boxes arrived, they would have arrived last Friday which would have been four days after they were ordered except for my place of business was closed on the day after Thanksgiving. So they arrived today. Appear to be well packed, about 92 pounds altogether. And let's see what we've got here. Some kinds of packing peanuts. Wick 2AS. And here's another reason why I was very happy to go with a kit manu uh, not manufacturer, but a kit that was put together by a company in that included with the kit are lab workbooks, nice little laminated cram sheet, and uh, a book they put out called How and Why We Subnet, which I think may be the most interesting uh, printed material that they say they distribute with these kits. Okay, now we've got some more hardware. This 2800 series router. This is a 2811. And this is going to form the, this is going to be the, the router of choice for my um, CCNA rack. And a lot of people also, the, the recommended lab layout for CCNA according to Cisco, is three routers and three switches, and there's various reasons for that. Uh, a lot of people will go two router, two switch, which I suppose is, is a valid choice, but I went three router, three switch, because I wanted to make sure that I could expose myself to anything that was going to be on the CCNA exam, and not only that, I don't plan on stopping after I get my CCNA. This lab is going to transition, if all goes well, also into my uh, CCNP 
route switch lab. So I put a lot of that thought in when I put this lab or when I decided which lab to order here. Another 2811. So those are the three switches for uh, three routers rather for my lab. So there's layer three covered. So layer two must be in the other box. Now there are other choices of router you can go with even through certification kits if you want to order one of their other kits. Uh, 1841 router is a very popular choice and as a matter of fact I have an 1841 here but the thing about the 1841 is that it needs to be uh, most 1841s seem to be upgraded uh, both RAM and flash storage to be able to run the latest iOS and that was another uh, big thing for me is that I wanted to be able to run uh, iOS 15 and I would not have been able to do that on some equipment that I was looking at but choices made here to do that I have an inception here UPS inside UPS Another nice thing about ordering a kit as opposed to trying to piece one of these things together is that I thought that's what was in here. All the cables, these just happen to be Ethernet cables, which obviously aren't hard to come by. But the cables required to do the labs, and here's a couple of console cables are included. So not a lot of thinking required there. Another WIC 2AS, which is another thing people sometimes don't choose not to go down that route. I wanted a lab that was capable of doing as much of what might appear on the CCNA in further uh, tests than that I could get. Here comes the switching portion of the program. These are all well wrapped and very clean. This is a Catalyst 2960. 48 port switch and uh, a lot of people go with 2950 again I wanted the latest iOS so went with 2960 this appears to be Twin and it is Cisco 2960. Now the kit that I was looking at originally came with three 2960s and three 2811s. The person I spoke to at certification kits made a suggestion based on what I had told him about 
my certification route that I think was a very good one in that instead of committing myself to only layer two switches in my kit that I should upgrade and they, they do this piecemeal should upgrade one of the sir, uh, one of the switches to a layer three switch which is what I did and So this is a 3560 layer threat layer three switch. So I actually have in my possession a second 3560. So with the th the second 3560 and upgrading the 1841, I'll be able to do f four switches, four routers, and be able to do the CCMP level labs when I get to that point. This is the third WIC 2AS, and those are the, the serial interfaces for the 2811 routers. There's one other, there's a couple more things in here. Let me pull the hardware out first. There's one other choice I made, it was actually kind of made at the last minute in that one of the offerings that they make at certification kits and you can get this kind of equipment online as well eBay or any place where used Cisco gear is sold is an access server basically this is another router and the sole purpose of this router is to provide serial ports is to provide, see this is a 20, 2500 series which is an obsolete router long obsolete according to Cisco but it has this async 1 through 8 port on the back which allows it to, uh, it has 8 asynchronous serial ports which connect to the console ports on these switches so and and routers so it also has a very old style uh, network port on it AOI AUI port rather and with a AUI to Ethernet transceiver you can connect this to a standard Ethernet network and basically telnet into any of your pieces of hardware remotely this is important to me because this lab is actually going to be set up in my basement rack. Um, I'll show that at some point. But I'm fortunate enough to have the space in my basement for a 45U rack full tower. Uh, currently has a virtualization server and some other pieces of networking equipment in it. And it will in my media server. Um, I'm going to reconfigure that rack in part to hold this lab uh, including the additional 3560 and the 1841 that I have once I get that upgraded. So that's the main part of the lab. There's still one more bag in here. There's the there's the AUI transceiver and the what they call the octopus cable, the eight-headed cable that has the RJ45s for connecting to the console ports on the routers and switches, and then the I believe it's a 68-pin connector. Could be wrong about that, but the 
connector that goes on to the back of the access server. This is a 2509 access server, which means it only has eight ports. There's a, a very similar one, the 2511, that has uh, 16 ports. So it basically has two. Uh, it takes two of those eight-way cables. Oh, I forgot about these. Now, another thing that you run into, especially when buying used equipment, is all the accessories that you need to rack mount these things. And I'm not going to take all this stuff out of the bag, but these are all the rack mounting brackets for all of this hardware. And I did have to pay additional for these. Uh, they don't include them in the base price for the routers and switches, but I have them all and they all match the gear that I have. So instead of scrounging up all these parts, and that, you know that's really, that was the road that I started down when I decided I was going to get certified. It's like I have some IT friends, I have some IT friends that even run a fair bit of Cisco equipment in, in production. And I can probably get a CCNA lab up. And um, I just had a really hard time getting a hold of the equipment. So the more I thought about it, the more I said to myself, if you really want to get this done and do it right, get the hardware that you need so that you can get it done. So thankfully, uh, I have an employer that provides for... Uh, training on uh, on a yearly basis and I was able to take some of those resources and use them towards putting this lab together. So in a future video I'm going to show you this lab installed in the rack and talk a little bit more about how I plan to attack CCNA and possibly further certifications once I get that far down the road but uh, until then thanks for watching.